Today we will look at opening the side body and perhaps some twists and we might use the belt. I have a few props out here, but I will always give you modifications. It's always good if you have a pillow, a prop, a towel, um, or something like that to perhaps support you in some of these poses. But there'll always be some kind of choices. So I'll make sure that I give you some of these choices. But by focusing a bit on twists in the side body, we not only focus on um, helping our digestion and also helping balance the spine, but we're also trying to create more space in the torso and particularly the lungs. And this also will create more space for all of the organs in the body. I'm sure that medical people like to believe that things don't change, but they actually do. So if you have more length in some of your side body, you can actually take in more breath and more air. So we will have a little exploration around that. Enjoy. So I always like to begin any kind of side body twist practice with just that nice little release where it's great if you've got, you know, little pillows. I'm just trying to figure out how I can just use the, the uh, uh, belt for this or a towel, but anything that you can give yourself a little bit of height when you place the arms to the side and then you bring the knees over. Because when we first start doing this, we may not actually be able to bring the legs to the floor and one of our shoulders might come up. And so to give ourselves more opportunity to relax in this, even blocks are nice too. But you, what you can do is whatever prop you have, you can play with it and just put it under the hips if that's the only place you have that'll support it. Um, you can place it under the feet, of course. Um, and I'm just going to see if there's something. I think if I put the belt around my waist and then I put it um, on my feet, I might be able to um, do something here. I'm just trying to figure out maybe if I put it around my shins. So it's around my hips and it's around my shins. And then I can go into this side position. And actually what this does is it keeps a relationship between your tailbone and your knees. So you can also try that. If you have no props, you could always put your arm underneath the shins and just put a fist here just to give support to those shins so you've got some space here. So there's a couple of options here. So right now I've just got my fist underneath that, but because I've got blocks, I'm going to put a block there. And then you can keep your head neutral, or if you like to look away from that leg, you can start to bring the opposite ear to the floor and look over the opposite hand if that suits your neck. And then you'll feel the stretch most likely in the side body, the side waist, maybe in the hips. Everybody's gonna feel it a little bit differently. But you wanna flex those feet as much as possible here. And really breathe into that whole, in my case, it's opening the left side lung. So you're really breathing into that whole left side body. I always love to imagine the sit bone on this top leg really angling away from me. So if you've got the belt on, you can actually, you know, 
put your hand there and give yourself a little press into the thigh, but you can also press, pull the belt a little bit and give yourself a little bit more stretch in the lower back and stretch in the sideways. I feel it a lot more by putting a little pressure on here. But if that's too intense, please back off. So you always want to back off if something is too much for you. You just have a few more cycles of breath. You can focus on counting the exhales. And then when you inhale, count the same length of the inhale. And then counting the exhale. And then matching the inhale to that exhale. So finding that evenness in the breath. And then slowly bring the knees up. And again, take whatever support you're using to the other side. And if you've got the belt on, you might have to tighten it a little bit and then bring that side over. And again, a few options where you can keep the head in neutral. You can look over the opposite arm. If your neck's okay, just be sure that you're not lifting the chin. You want to really lengthen the chin and bring it, you know, sort of parallel to the shoulder. You don't want it, you know, too tight in, but you don't want to lift it up either. So you want to try to have, uh, just the ear going towards the floor as gravity goes through that. But you also wanna make sure that your shoulders are placed down to the floor. That'll give you, that means that the stability in this pose is through the arms and the shoulders so that you can move the lower body. And that's one of the basic patterns of movement is being able to stabilize half of the body and freely move the other half of the body. And this is a great pose for that kind of example. And again, if you want to use the belt or press the, the hand into the thigh to give yourself just a little bit more action, and anytime you do something like this, you're engaging muscles in another part of your body, in this case, in the arm. So you're getting a little bit of arm work here. Actually, I'm seeing that, that my shoulder came off, so maybe I should cross over the other hand to press here. So that's another option, is crossing the hand over and really pressing this sit bone as long and far away from your shoulder as possible. So that gives you uh, another way to put more into the stretch, just depending on what's going on in your body. And then slowly release that. And so just bring your feet to the floor and just notice your pelvis. We're just gonna do a little bit of rocking. See if you can just roll the top part of the pelvis down so that lifts the tailbone up. And then see if you can exhale and press the tailbone so that a little bit of your lower back comes off the floor. So just do this with, um, you know, where it feels right for you. So you roll the spine, so the tailbone comes off, you're engaging those abdominals, and then you roll it away, press that tailbone away from you, you get more stretch in the, 
Well, it, again, it depends on your body where you're feeling the stretch. I feel it, you know, a little bit in the lower back. And we're just trying to create more awareness in that pelvic structure. And then bring the pelvis back to neutral and you're gonna press one side of the pelvis down and release it up and press the other side of the pelvis. So it means that you're lengthening the side, opposite side here when you do that. So you can imagine your pelvis like a clock face. And so we're doing three and nine here. So when we were doing the pelvis this way, it was 12 and six, and then we do three and nine. And you can press the feet in to get a little bit more action in the pelvis. And then bring it back to neutral. And then you can interlock the fingers under your head, or you can just um, keep the hands down or overhead. And we'll inhale the knees, extend up, and exhale, and bring the knees down. So we'll add a variation here that will be more of the side body and a twist if you're up to it. So if you're up to it, you can hold your head and bring your opposite hand to the opposite feet, and then come back down. And then when you come up, you bring the, this is my left hand to my edge of my right foot and come back down. So if you're okay with this, you're supporting your head with your hands, then you can do that. Otherwise, just stay with the first pose or you can play with just lifting the head up when you lift the legs up. If this feels better for you, but if you want more of the side body stretch and more of the twist, then bring the hands to the opposite feet. So there's three variations there and you can play with what works for you. And depending on what you're doing, just do two more. And then you can bring the feet down and just press up and have a little shake in the pelvis, in the abdominal, so that, and you can actually go ahead and just windshield wiper the legs. So it's like just a windshield wiper going side to side. And just doing this can be a nice little um, warm up and good stretch as well. And then drop your knees to one side and roll to your shoulder and then slowly roll up and come into, now we've done this before with the belts if you liked how this felt, you can bring the belt on the thighs and come into forward facing hero pose. And if you're holding the belt, you're just getting more length here in the lower spine. And then reach those arms forward now and then just walk them over towards the right leg now make sure that you're not shortening that right side make sure you've got length in both sides and just try to hang over that right thigh as best as you can keeping both both sides long and a couple of breaths here, really pressing those hands in, really pressing the shins. And then 
come back to the center and you can either stay in the center or bring the hands back to the belt and pull through the thighs again. And hands forward and then walking them over to the side, trying to create length in both sides without collapsing on one side. So there's action in both sides. And you're using your abdominals here. And then walking the palms back to the front and come into all fours and then tuck your toes under and come into downward facing dog. Couple of breaths here. And then bring the knees back and go into big toes together, knees wide. And again, if you liked the belt right here, where you really use your arm strength to press into the thigh sockets. Now I can feel more length in my sit bones when I do this, which is kind of funny. But of course, each of us, you know, gonna have different sensations in the body. And then come up to all fours, come into downward dog. And this position, you can use a belt if you need to, but let me show you. You're gonna bring the feet a little forward and then you're going to take the right hand and hang over that left leg. You can put a belt here if it's hard for you to reach the calf. You can have a belt here to hold, just hanging over that thigh. Or just bring the hand up a little bit higher if you can't reach it down to the ankle. Then bring that right hand back down, bring the left hand over to the right leg. Try not to do what I'm doing, which is shifting my hips. Try to keep the hips as level as you can and just bring the torso towards that leg. Then bring that hand back to downward facing dog and just start to walk the feet and the hands towards each other. Because we're here, you can shake out the torso a bit and then slowly roll up the spine and then come into Tadasana in the middle of the mat. And first we're going to stand with the feet parallel and you're going to interlock the fingers. Just remember which finger is going on top. We're going to press it front of the shoulders and then inhale up and then really press it into the feet you're going to stretch towards the right side and then inhale come back to the center and really press into those feet as you stretch over to the left side. So it's like you're stretching over a ball. You're not collapsing this side. You are actually lifting as if you're going over a ball there. Then come back to the center and let the arms float down. And then change the crossover so the opposite finger goes on top. Press the hands forward 
inhale up. And this time we'll do a slight little twist in the upper body. So really pressing the feet down and then lift the abdominals and it's just a little bit in the shoulder. And then come back to the center and then to the other side without moving your pelvis. You're really grounding those legs and moving to the other side, then coming back to the center, and then release the arms down. Now, if you can, there's a couple of choices for the next pose. You can either put one foot in front of the other, see if you can find the balance, or you can cross that foot over, see what happens with your balance, and then come up and hold one wrist, press to one side, see what happens when you do this. Come back to the center, reach for the other wrist, back to the center and let the arms float down. Just notice what's happening in your balance. I have a little wobbly, so I can feel that. <laughs> and then change the crossover. Again, you can just put it in front if that works for you, or you can cross it over. And if you can't do that, you can just stand with the feet together. So again, Reaching one wrist to side stretch over, finding the balance. Coming to the other side. And then slowly release the arms down to your side. And then come back into Tadasana with the feet wide. And we'll go into a tree variation as well. So I'm lifting my right leg. If you're a mirror image, you lift the left foot up and bring it to the thigh. Toes are pointed down. Now we're gonna put our thumb over our first finger if you wanna try this. And you place the hand on the thigh, bring the other arm up and go into a little C curve. Just go as far as what works for you today. And then inhale, slowly bring that arm up, float the arms down, change feet. So grounding into that foot first and bringing the foot up, toes point down. Usually the, most of us don't have 180 degree turnout, so the knee will be a bit forward. We're trying to keep the hips together. And then hands, thumb on the first finger, dropping the hand down on the thigh and the C curve with the other arm. So there's something here about really pressing the bottom foot and really pressing the foot into the thigh at the same time, finding that C curve. And then inhale, slowly come up and bring those arms down and bring the feet down. And then if you have the belt, if you don't have the belt, don't worry about it. If you have the belt, we're going to go into bringing the feet wide, but then we're going to turn all the way to one side. So right now I've got my right foot front and my left foot back. And then you're going to use this belt so you know which way the hips are. So you're trying to bring both hips forward and then you can press those arms as you go forward 
And if you don't have the belt, you can always have the hands on the hips just to remind you where they are. And you can be way up here if that works for you. But just going towards halfway down right now. And again, by using the belt, you get some arm work. And then inhale, slowly come up. Bring the feet back to parallel. So there's less between, less distance between the feet for this position, but you do have to play with what works for you. So then turning all the way around, Arjvottanasana, and then bringing the belt into it or hands on the hips, going forward and seeing how you go. See if you can keep those hips even by really pulling on the belt. And then slowly come up, bring the feet parallel. And then just hang out here for a couple of breaths. You want to engage the legs though. You don't want to just like hang out here and have really soft knees. See if you can still get the lift when the legs are a little bit wider. And then we're going to go to this side and do a twist. So it's the same base of the pose where we come all the way around. And with the belt, you can start going forward. And then if you can bring the opposite arm to the calf muscle and the other hand to your sacrum, you can start to go into that twist. And then inhale, slowly come up, bring the feet parallel and you can feel that the further down you go the more intense it'll be so you can stay quite upright to start with and slowly slide your leg down so maybe on this side we'll try that so pivot the feet around so you're really turning that back foot in and then as you go forward you're trying to even out those hips then you have the front leg arm on your hand, on your sacrum, and the opposite leg here. And if we start with it on the thigh, we can start the rotation and slowly slide the hand down. And then inhale, slowly come up and bring the feet parallel again. And because it's nice that we've sort of warmed up to it, we're gonna do it a second time. And we will, again, bring the hand up higher and then slowly slide it down to see, you know, just to go where it works for you to get that twist. So again, we bring the, the feet around, hips are as even as possible. And then going forward, pulling the belt, bring, the same hand as the leg, front leg on your sacrum, opposite hand on the thigh to start with, pressing it into the thigh to get that twist. And then you can slowly slide the hand down. Really pressing those feet for stability. slowly come up, bring the feet parallel, a couple of breaths there, and then bringing the belt back, coming all the way around to the other side. So as you go forward, then you bring the same hand as the front leg to your sacrum, bring the other hand onto the thigh, getting that 
twist going, sliding the hand down. Pressing into those feet and then slowly come up and bring those feet together. And just back to Tadasana, just noticing what you notice with your breath. I know my heart rate's gone up a bit. So the first sitting twist we'll do, we'll come down to sitting in simple, easy cross legs. And if you need some height, you can always um, put a blanket, towel, something underneath your sit bones so you know uh, if you have a block you can sit on that so there's a lot of ways to do this and depending on your hips you know you might just want to bring that crossover further away from you you're trying to just uh, Find that verticality in the torso sitting on the sit bones and then ease in the cross leg but a lot of times people can't do this very well so sometimes people put support under the thighs like oh perfect my little pillows so you can put pillows there if you really have trouble there's different things you can do with the belt too now of course I've, oh, there it is <laughs> You know, there are ways that sometimes people bring the belt and just tie the belt here to give themselves a little stability in those thighs. So if you wanted to do that, you could do that. And we're just gonna do a bit of a twist here. So we'll twist on both sides. So I've this is my left knee, but you can do mirror or the opposite or the same. And take the opposite hand right to the bottom of the thigh. And then you're really, you can really bring that arm up high and open it to the back so that it opens up that shoulder. And then first, just look to the side, keeping that chin as parallel. And then if you want a little bit more and you're okay in the head and the neck, you can start to really look over the back shoulder. And then slowly come back to the center and Take the opposite hand to the opposite knee. Again, really bring that arm up. And come around, looking over, either just straight to the side or behind. And then coming back to the center and see if you can bend the knees up best you can. If you need to shake them out, you can shake them out and then cross the legs over again if you can in whatever way you can. A lot of people find, you know, trouble with the hips, but again, it's interesting to play with the belt to just hold your legs there and give yourself support. And then we'll start with the opposite twist this side. We'll go to the opposite knee first and really circle that arm way around you to open that shoulder. Of course, if you have restrictions, which is what I should have mentioned, you can't do that big arm circle. You can always just, you know, bring it back or you can bring it back on the same level if that works. So you always have to listen to your own body. <laughs> I'm just giving you suggestions, but you have to do what works for you. And 
then coming back to the center and we'll change sides, putting the hand on the opposite leg. And if you have the range of motion, it's lovely. Well, it's actually lovely to feel where you are restricted in this. And, you know, we could make this a whole slow it down and see how you can find that full range in the, in the arm and the shoulder. And then you can bring the chin over if you're all right with that. And then slowly unwind and we are really running out of time <laughs> but I'll give you one more little sitting twist that's more for the abdominals so bring the legs out into Dandasana and of course this is where a lot of people often need something to sit on because you don't want to be sitting way back here you want to be on those sit bones and then I'm bringing up my right leg, but you can certainly bring up the left foot. And you're bringing that heel in. So you can really press that heel down. And then you can start to wrap the opposite arm here. And it's nice to just stay here. If that's where you want to stay, that's okay. This is also where the belt could come in handy too especially if you want to go further where you bring the arm here and the arm back here or if you wanted to try to do a bind but you couldn't do a bind you could have the belt there and hold the belt down here so you put the arm on one side and you hold the belt lost the belt like so you can work on that as well but if you just want to go here you can go here or if you just need to stay here stay here and then slowly come around I'll show you all three on the other side so bring in the opposite leg and start to wrap those arms and again you can stay here you can go further with the arm on the outside hand behind you or if you like the idea of the belt you just want to bring the hand down here and the hand with the belt and then you're really pulling on the belt getting a little bit more so whatever works for you today. There's all kinds of crazy arm binds <laughs> in yoga. So not all of us can do them all that well. So now just come on down and Again, have the legs bent and you can again just windshield wiper your legs to see how your hips are, your legs are. And if you don't have any lower back issues, you can go into Shavasana by extending one leg out and then extending the other leg out. just come into Shavasana. So just let your body settle into the pose. If you need something under your knees, you can put something under your knees. Because Shavasana is always about finding that ease in your body so that you can allow your mind, your mental thinking to just settle into the body. And 
see with every breath if you can soften and find more of the back side of your body into the mat. And then just notice your side hip area, perhaps your side ribs. Can you feel a little more ease or a little more space as you breathe? And you may not, and it's not a problem. Just trying to create more awareness in the body. More connection for you with your own body and what your own body needs. soften at the collarbone notches. Your throat soften. Your neck softens and lengthens. Base of the head is softening. Your scalp soften. Your forehead widens and softens. Your temples are softening. Space between your eyebrows softens. Eyes rest into your eye socket. Your cheeks are softening. Your jaw softens. Your chin is softening and your tongue rests into the lower palate. Slowly begin to deepen your breath, bringing a little bit of movement into your hands, your feet. Give yourself a nice stretch in the body. And in your own time, you can roll to your side. Finding that easeful way Come up to sitting and may you really feel into your breath every day at some point and be grateful that you have this beautiful breath of life to support you in all your endeavors. Namaste.